before all of these states, most of these states, in the country, uh, had an uh, average of million dollar disaster per year somewhere in the state. So these bad things do happen. Yes, I learned that uh, actually tornadoes and squall lines and supercells are actually a lot more common than I previously thought. Tornadoes and squall lines. Yes. And we're still fundamentally the same processes. What do you say? Oh. Here's uh, Jason Personal. Here you are. You've been chasing lately? Oh, God, yeah. Every chance I get. It's nice. I live in Colorado now, so I can go chasing. I had a lot of fun going and chasing like in early May, which is not something I used to be able to do. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Marshall. Obviously you need to do your map plotting, you need to look at the surface, you need to look at upper air, you need to do soundings, you need to look at models, but you just can't focus in on one model to tell you the answer. And you can't just see a bullseye of supercell composite parameter and say, I want to go to that bullseye. That's not a forecast, all right? What I want to do is look at as many things as I can, and I put different weights on it. But you know what the ultimate decision for me is? When I'm out there and I'm seeing it with my own eyes. I love visible satellite too. And I love uh, the water vapor imagery. I think satellite is underplayed out there a lot. And then radar is only to be used when you're actually in a chase mode. It does show some boundaries occasionally early on, but for the most part, I will use it when I'm actually physically chasing. Excellent. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We'll Hey, good evening. This is Tim with you. Not Tim Marshall, but Tim Vasquez. And let's check and make sure our mute is off, and I think we are good to go. So let's take a look at the weather across the U.S. Looks like we're still rolling that old uh, live stream. Let me get that out of the way, and we'll head into today's weather. It's been uh, pretty busy here the past couple of days, and there's a lot of logistics involved in getting a live stream set up. And it took uh, exactly hour and uh, 40 minutes to get this going. So here we are. High temperatures across the U.S. today showed uh, things are running still rather warm across Texas and the south. We see 80s all the way down into te Texas, Dallas, Houston, uh, all the way up to 80, and even 87 there at Austin. Here in Denver, 67, and we're seeing very mild conditions across the Midwest, all the way up into the Great Lakes. So we've got unseasonably warm weather across much of the country, and when we have weather like that, we know that there's probably a ridge, and I haven't looked at the 500 millibar chart yet, so this is kind of new to me. But we do see, yeah, a little bit of a long wave Ridge. Let me see if I can back this off a little bit and we'll get a better look at that. This is the 500 millibar chart. This is up at 18,000 feet. This is the middle levels of the uh, troposphere. And hang on a second. I There we go. Maximized my window on accident. But you can see we've got a little bit of a trough along the west coast right here in this region right there. Cut off low once again over Los Angeles, like we had about a week ago. And then we have a long wave ridge across the western U.S. And by a long wave ridge, uh, well, yeah, you can see these little undulations, like there's a ridge there, a bit of a trough here, a bit of a ridge here, a bit of a trough. But the overall large scale picture is very large kind of Boeing northward. So that's the long wave ridge and embedded in that are these little troughs that are moving through the flow. And as you probably know that when that gets further to the southeast and moves into the base of the trough, we're going to see these small scale troughs kind of enlarge and deepen the uh, large scale trough. So anyway, the bottom line 
big ridge over the central U.S., and that's given us our warm weather. But weather changes on the way with that trough along the west coast. You can hear the A-line out there here in Denver. The uh, hotel here has cards in each room apologizing for the train. They've had some problems there blasting the side of the hotel here. It's not really that bad as far as I can tell, but anyway, here's the, the uh, pattern. We can see a cold core, cold core low just south of Arizona. So this is a lot of cold air. There's going to be unstable conditions in that, a lot of mid-level instability, and we're going to have strongly diurnal showers in that part of the U.S. And then we see the thermal ridge out across Texas and Oklahoma, so that explains a lot of the warm weather. And as you might guess, in between those there's probably a front, because this is a Clinic area right in here where we have very strong thermal gradients. This is a thickness gradient. So the mean temperature in the lowest five kilometers of the atmosphere or so tends to be rather cold over here and then it tends to be rather warm out here in Texas. So in between that's going to mean we have a front. So the position of that front, where is that going to be? We're probably going to go for something like this in northern Mexico possibly leading back to the north across Texas. I don't really know about this frontal position because I know it's very warm across this area, but at first glance, that's probably what I would go with and I would re-inspect the data to see if there might be something in there. But there's another feature up to the north that I see over Nebraska and Illinois right there. So that's probably the actual warm front. And that's north of Denver and that extends to the south maybe like that. And I remember that we did have a northeast winds when I came into Colorado yesterday blowing in this area right here. So that's probably that old frontal boundary retreating northward and moving up into Nebraska. So as you can see this is kind of the process we go through of putting the patterns together using our observations a couple days ago, using the thickness pattern, using the upper air, and putting that all together. Okay, also looks like a bit of a cold core system over northern Georgia, so those of you there probably seeing a little bit of shower activity in that area, I would imagine. 500 millibar analysis, uh, this is kind of the same thing except we're overlaying vorticity, but we see a little bit of dynamics energy coming into northwestern Mexico right in this area. So that's heading for Arizona. In New Mexico, we have a viewer there in Las Cruces working on his roof and probably going to get some rain in that area. Okay, let's check out what the dynamics are going to do over the next uh, few days. Advan they're going to advance eastward slowly and we're going to find that in Texas on Monday. Okay, let's see. We'll move forward playing a game here of trying to see as much of the maps as I can. I've only got one monitor here, so everything is kind of a jumble on my screen. But anyway, moving forward, I guess this is about Tuesday or Wednesday. Cutoff low across Texas, and then a ridge building in back behind it. Then we see another trough moving into California. So there we go. Long wave troughing taking effect on the western U.S., this entire area right here, so it's probably going to start becoming, trending towards being a little bit stormy out west over the next week or so. There goes another system in about 10 days into the western U.S., and then things become kind of zonal after that. Okay, quick look at the water vapor imagery. There we can see that uh, cold core system over Georgia, wrapping in a little bit of this dry slot into New Orleans up into southern Georgia. And then out west, there's digital atmosphere, believe it or not. I try to start digital atmosphere. I've only got one version on it, and I don't have a key number. So the very program I wrote, I'm locked out of it temporarily until I find my key generator. So anyway, don't have any help from digital atmosphere at the moment, but out west there's that cold core system over northwestern Mexico wrapping a bit of a dry slot 
in this area right here. Across uh, Denver right now, just southerly flow, kind of dry. Dew points in the teens and 20s. Temperatures in the 50s, they drop down to 53. Getting a little bit of that nighttime cooling in that dry air. And we'll take a look, one, a look at one little sounding. We'll look at uh, Denver and uh, see what that shows. And that shows a pretty classic pattern for a dry regime here. So we see a very strong uh, wet bulb or very strong dew point depression here. So very dry air in the lower levels. And then a little bit of an inverted V here. So if we had a little bit more moisture, we would see elevated showers in this kind of weather pattern. And then, looks like some 70 or 80 knot winds aloft, so the jet stream is in the area. All right, so I think we're ready to head into the forecast, and I think I'm done with the maps here. Let me get our pivotal weather forecast set up, and I think that is good to go. So I'm going to take a look at the chat, and I'll scroll over to that. Uh, let me fix the windows here. And you can probably read along the uh, chat with me. I'm gonna. I don't have a second screen, so I'm having to flip back and forth here. Got uh, Mark and uh, Ron Chalfont, Alexi in Central Texas, Sue M from Indiana. Have uh, Brett Dean checking in, uh, Mike Estwick, Mark Davis, and uh, Ron Chalfont mentions uh, rain damage there in Southern California yesterday. Santa Barbara had up to 10.42 inches in the higher elevations. Good grief. Yeah, we're getting the rain in spades out there in California. And Panda Lover 421, summer in Michigan today. I guess uh, that's some good news out there. All right, let's head into the forecast. Switch over here, and there's our GFS forecast. You can see the strong pressure gradient out there in northwestern Mexico, so that's suggesting that's probably the cold front working into that part of the continent. So we'll roll this forward. Give me just a second here. Uh, Pivotal Weather has a slightly different interface. I'm going to have to pull up the forecast hour loop. Here comes our next train. <laughs> okay, so while that uh, loads, let me get this all set up here, and I think we are good to go. Okay, there we go. We are rolling. There's that deep southerly fetch coming up from the Gulf of Mexico right there. Southerly winds all the way up to the, the uh, Dakotas bringing in that warm weather underneath that ridge. And let's see what we're looking at. We're, we know that we've got uh, conditions kind of deteriorating out west. So we can already see southwesterly winds coming into northern California right there. In Colorado, lee side trough down in New Mexico. So continued uh, mild weather, looks like. And not much of a change over the next few days. Looks like we get a little bit of a northerly system coming through the Dakotas on Wednesday right there. Other than that, uh, just more lee side troughing in Colorado. And now I think we're getting a little bit of a front out in California right here. So let's see. We need to look at the uh, thickness, so I'm going to pull that up real quick. You're probably a little bit, bit more accustomed to these maps here. So let's bring that up real quick here. Yeah, see that frontal gradient, uh, that, that thickness gradient right in here? That's the front coming into California on Wednesday. So that's going to push eastward during the uh, week, and we see it coming into Mexico on Thursday and out into Kansas and Oklahoma by Friday. There it is right there, stretching from about Dodge City down to Lubbock and down to El Paso. And then the warm front, that's going to be extending from about Pratt up through Quincy and then back towards northern Indiana where Sue and Sarah are located. And then looks like a bit of a dry line for Texas down in the I-35 corner, probably due to this downslope flow. So this is going to be kind of a warm day looks like on Friday 
Thursday going into Friday. And then as the system punches eastward, we'll see the cold air start coming into Texas and Oklahoma right there. It also looks uh, kind of cold there for Colorado on the back side there. Then going into next week, uh, 26th through 27th, just a little bit of high pressure across the Midwest and then another Pacific system moving eastward. So you see that coming in. A little bit of a northern storm too in the Great Lakes. And then by the 1st first, first of March, looks like things uh, get kind of active in Texas for that Friday. A little bit of a showery system coming through into Arkansas and Louisiana, and then some cool weather coming back in behind it. So I think that's uh, pretty much the forecast right there. And let me head back to the chat and see if there's any last uh, parting comments before we sign off here. Not really. I guess we're pretty much done here. So I think we've got pretty much got a routine down. Things should run a lot uh, smoother tomorrow. And hopefully you can join us then. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.